What is going on, everyone? My name's Boyt, and I'm back. Some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action. Sporting on the left side of the map in the blue color, playing as Ra. His name is Joe. His opponent today in the red color, playing as Poseidon. His name is Matrius. Matrius the Great, Matrius the Strong. Matrius, the not losing tonight, he is having an absolute, well, he is absolutely having his way with Mr. Joe. It's not been fair thus far. Joe played two games of Ra, one game is set. It's not been going great for him. He's back on the Ra now in game number four. We'll see if he can find a little bit of his magic um, that he's been saving up in there. Uh, Joe is kind of like a specialist with Egyptian, but he's a specialist in a way that he like beats all of the Egyptian players really easily. He beats all of the Norse players really easily. He even beats all of the Atlantean players really easily. The only players that ever really come close to him are the Greek players. Um, and Matrius is showing, showing why. It's because, in a way, is Matrius really outplaying Joe? Maybe. But, I mean, in a way, also, this Greek here is, is, is showing that it's really, really strong, especially in that last game. Uh, really, really strong, difficult to, to play against. We'll see how things are going to go. It's a new map. It's a new you. It's a new me. It's a new way of thinking here. Monuments coming down. House coming down. I love this from uh, from Joe. Building both of these things all at once. The only thing I would have liked to see a little bit different is um, getting yourself the temple up as well all in one go. Uh, but beggars can't be choosers. A little bit of efficiency here. For Joe. You can actually also do this and get both the house and the monument empowered by just putting this first house near the gold mine here. You can put it like uh, like here next to this tree uh, and then you can dump the, the gold in, empower the monument up, up empower the, the monument up next to the, 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 the mining camp, empower the, monu the house up next to the, the mining camp and you can get both of them there as well. Did Joe go for husbandry? No, he went for hunting dogs. Oh, Delete that. That's that's gonna hunt. Okay, to lucky. Okay. Yeah. Um, one of the things about Ra, which basically pushes Ra into the stratosphere of like unbeatable gods, is if Ra gets himself a incredibly good second town center. And what I mean by an incredibly good second town center, I mean a town center which has got a ton of hunt on it. This pushes Ra up into a really, really good position against Greek, and I think that I'm, I, I feel for Greek players when they're in this position because it can it can make them um, a little bit upset because instead of them being ridiculously overpowered, they, they finally have to fight someone on a, somewhat of a fair fair ground. And what it is 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 if the Ra player doesn't need to farm in the classical age by hunting on their second town center, literally on it. If it's any way away from the town center, better better to just farm because you're going to get harassed by a second age Greek archer hero. Um, but the point is, if you can hunt on the town center, it means you can get a really, really quick, no farm, fast heroic, which means that your heroic age is not only quicker, but also you've got more resources to play with. Um... And you're going to be able to put pressure onto your opponent faster. You're going to be able to get those raids going and be in a better position. But we see Joe here. He's trying out this Bast yet again. And we'll see how this one goes. He's tried Bast a couple of times. He's been yet yet to have any success with it. Um, but it kind of looks like he's going for a fast second town center nonetheless. He does have a decent town center over here with this settlement. We've got back gold mines. He's got this back hippo here as well. So grabbing this town center is going to prevent the, um, the the raids onto that back food there. Plus, he's left himself the uh, the deer in his main base, which I absolutely love there uh, for Joe. As he's, and he's also got a water buffalo here as well. So it makes a lot of sense, this um, this 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 decision to go through Bastard because he ain't going to be farming and ta, not going to be that useful here. As we see a town center coming up on the front here, Matrius is now grabbing himself a relic. He's got himself the nose of the Sphinx. He's going to be getting sort of a little bit more, um, a little bit more hit points here. Up onto the top of the map, we do see the girdle of Apollota, giving the extra toxodes or just extra ranged line unit, main ranged unit HP. Toxodi chariot, Arcus, throw an axe, which is a bit odd, but it's in there. 
even though they're the throwing axeman. Does the throwing axeman have a girdle? Does the throwing axeman have a girdle? You guys tell me. I don't know. Armory coming up here for Joe. On the front here is the uh, as the center getting pushed back. Nope, nope. Armory in the main base. What's the plan here? Not 100 percent sure. But with the Sphinx in, Mattress has got to be a little bit careful. You do have to respect the Sphinx a little bit. Like part of part of what's part of what's scary about playing against Bast is that the Sphinx is going to be able to raid your villages. We do see a wall coming up over here. This is one of the hard parts about playing um, Ra is being hyper aware that this happens super early and saying, all right, I'm, I'm going to put a stop to it. As we almost see the centaur going down, the villager is going to be able to get away from here, leaving 23 food on that water buffalo. He's not going to be too upset about that. Can jump onto these pigs, but better would be to just jump onto the, um, the herdables over there. And that's exactly what Joe's going to be doing as he... Jumps through the town center, popping up over here into his main base there. Meanwhile, where is the Sphinx? Sphinx not doing anything. Walls coming up all over the place. I think this is a, a missed opportunity. Every time you see the heroes, you should be moving the Sphinx into a different place on the map because you can get a lot of value out of this one. Sitting him idle um, really, really hurts the advantage of going through Bars, which is having a, a five plus speed uh, Sphinx. Still, how many relics do people get? Well, the trio of the monkey head and nose of the Sphinx. This is such a big relic. It basically means that Joe can't go for um, Horus here. If you see that relic, you just say, all right, no Horus. Unless your plan with um with Tornado is to kill off a, a Titan Gate. No Horus is the way to go. As the villagers over here get themselves the granary up. They're going to be going onto that hippopotamus there. Finishing up the hunt in this position here as well. That's the Sphinxes. The Sphonx. Holding in the main base. Some spearmen going to be coming out here as Joe is uh, unfortunately housed at the moment as the villagers look like they're going to be going for this town center. Getting out a handful of units to get that third town center up does make a lot of sense here. Bit of a different option for Joe. As we do see an armory coming up over here. And technically speaking, Matrius can sneak around here, but the uh, the Pharaoh comes forward. Joe's... Oh, what's he doing? Kill the centaur! Matrius is already... Oh, no, he's misclicked. Classic. And the centaur is down. As units coming up onto this position, this is not going to be able to be prevented for the time being for Matrius, but uh, Matrius sees what's coming for himself now as... Eclipse dropped. Matrius, well, Joe wants value here and now, and he will pick off a lot of units here retreating away. This is a ton of damage. 16.88 damage here with the special attack to take down those Toxodes. So he manages to kill off all of those Toxodes there. Oh, not all of them. One of them. Oh, no, all of the Toxodes there. That special attack at the end, cleaning that one up. Joe's now got himself three town centers, but he's down a god power. Not wanting to rely on that one for the sake of ceasefire blocking it. Um, but does get some kills. Has he got only one monument here? I think it's because he's gone one monument here. He's not planning to spam myth units in this game, is my best guess. As the Sphinx coming up to the top side of the map, walls have been abandoned here, it seems, with the effort of grabbing this one. But the units will sneak through here. That's not really a good place to raid on this top side of the map, nonetheless. But nonetheless, the uh, the villagers will villager will get taken out. The wall will get denied here. Uh, one really nice thing you can do as the Egyptian player is to come through and build a wall in the opposite direction through your opponent's walls. Um, if you don't want to come in and just completely wall it back off yourself, you can just go draw a line that way from this point to this point. It stops that wall from being able to be built easily. As the villagers finishing up the hippopotamus, we do see another monument coming up now. Joe with lots and lots of gold in the bank, but lots of villagers on food at the moment. He does have this gold mine down the bottom. He's got pickaxe. Still no plow in. Could be worthwhile grabbing that one. Um, and also shaft mine, but sometimes you go, I don't want to get shaft mine because I'm holding a bunch of gold, but you forget that that gold is going to be going into farms very, very shortly as Hathor does end up coming through there for Joe. Gets himself that skin of the rhino. 
from Matrius, pushing forward for the time being, looking for something to raid here. But I mean, it's such a defensive map. Imagine if these walls were denied, then this bottom gold mine's opened. All of this hunt is opened here. That that uh, I mean, obviously you can just kill off the gate, but or the wall, but. Not exactly happening as the unit's now pushing over here. Medium cavalry coming in. Village is going to be jumping onto the wood line for the time being. Spamming out a whole bunch of chariot archers here is always a good idea. It's never not a good idea to spam out the chariot archers. The pharaoh getting caught out of position. He definitely don't want to be throwing that one away as he does pull back ever so slightly. The Sphinx coming in. And Mattress going to have to pull back. Mattress at 119 and 135 population. Pushing up here with his own units. Now, Joe with tons of gold in the bank going to be dropping that Migdal Stronghold. Still no shaft mine. Still a little bit surprised about that one. But he can get himself plow and irrigation before rain, which personally I think is a good idea. Whether or not it is or not, I don't actually know the... I do know the numbers. It is a good idea. You should get, you should get the... Uh, if you can get irrigation and even get uh, yourself access to sacred cats as well before the rain, it's definitely worth it. So Theseus does end up getting taken out. Toxoid is going to be retreating back. Villagers onto this position to uh, grab that gold mine on the front there. Wanting to put pressure over here. Mattress does still have himself that um, ceasefire remaining. And he's going to be going to the Heroic Age very, very shortly. Though he is throwing away a lot of units with these uh, Sphinx coming through to clean these units up. The Sphinx are really giving a huge amount of oomph to this uh, Egyptian army, making life super difficult for Matrius as Matrius runs through this position, throwing away every one of those units there. That's so painful for him. Joe is in a great position now. 72 villages. Yes, Matrius is in front by a little bit, but Joe is very much at his heels, plus still has rain, ladies and gentlemen, which means that's a ton of food going to be coming his way. Does decide to drop that locust on this position. One, two, three, four, five villages falling. Rain dropping down. Um, and how many, how much? Uh... Sacred Cats and Plow coming through at the very least. It will come through here in time, but. We'll see how things are going to go as the Sphinx does end up getting taken out. Joe going to be pulling back ever so slightly here. Sitting out on this position. Still no siege works up here to put pressure but whoop, Rock going to be coming over here. Another thing you can do with the Rock is come over here, just sit him on this position here, and then send the Sphinx over there or send some Chariot Archers over there or send anything over there and just kind of hop through the Rock to jump onto the other side and raid uh, the other player unsuspectingly. Village is already in a good position here to drop a market um, straight away for Matrius and start thinking about jumping to the next age. But because Matrius drew away all those units, he's going to be stuck in this uh, he's going to be stuck in this classical age for a little bit longer, though, with 17, oh sorry, 77 villagers out. That's going to be a really, really short time to get to 2,000 or 1,000 food, 1,000 gold, 2,000 resources total where that's concerned. Uh, but the problem, I guess, for Matrius is he's out of hunt and he doesn't really want to move forward and hunt underneath these Migdal strongholds that are in the center of the map. Osiris now coming through for Joe. And match well. I thought that Matrius would be slowed down here, but as always, if you're not fighting, you're getting resources, and if you're getting resources, you're going next age. So there's that. There's the market gonna come up here for Matrius. Matrius starting a, a bit of a cheeky early wall onto this uh onto this market to stop any sort of shenanigans there. Very, very nice sneakiness here. You can also, after he gets the wall up, you can also start putting stables up and everything else over there. As we do see a cheeky little Hippocon raid. Could be hitting this position. Though, Joe's got himself skin of the rhino. He probably should have just stayed there and just turned around and shanked the Hippocon there. As Hippocon moving into the main base of, uh, of Joe. Joe turns around. Joe ignores. Joe's village is getting harassed. No problem. Market in the corner. Hephaestus is coming through. Fortified town centers also coming through here as well. Osiris, very, very close to finishing. And honestly, these sorts of things, this is scary. This is scary for Joe. Because these sorts of kind of Osiris timings, so to speak, all that matters with them is keeping the son of Osiris alive, keeping the son of Osiris doing damage. So we do see a cheeky little 
uh, a cheeky little, wow, that's a lot of pigs there. How many is that? Nine pigs? Oof. The Spearman should be able to win this fight, though. There's enough of them. Good micro from Matrius, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna matter that much. Plus, there's a mummy that could be used over there. Son of Osiris coming in. Migdol Stronghold right on the front here. They start putting pressure onto this town center. Unfortunately for Joe, still no siege works anywhere that I can see. So no catapult will be able to come out just yet. But he is making some elephant here to deal with those as the uh, the villagers coming over here. Wait, did he? Did the spearman lose? Hippocon is so strong, man. This is the best market I've ever seen from Matrius. Has he finally converted to building good markets? My god. Siege works now up. Forge of Olympus coming through. Towers coming down for Joe. Sometimes I question if this is actually what you want to do here as Ra. Now, obviously this is good. He's getting himself guard towers, crenellations. So he's going to be able to put pressure on here, but it means that Joe's not spending resources on a trade route, not spending resources on line upgrades, not spending resources on armory upgrades. Meanwhile, he is getting raided over here, but there, is, there are two spearmen to deal with this, and the spearmen will be able to clean this up. In fact, he might not even lose a villager here, so he turns around and shanks, deals with that one, back to work, catapult out, another tower on this front here, coming through, Matrius on the back here, got himself double Heliopoli, plus the Colossus, it's the uh, Polyphemus just bashes that war elephant away. The tower coming up on the front here. Three towers here, plus that Son of Osiris. The best way to do this is just leave the Son of Osiris next to the towers. Don't move him with the army at all. Even and if you do, box formation, those sorts of things, really important. That's the Polyphemus here getting pushed back. Lots and lots of damage coming in from that those heavy chariots there. Son of Osiris on the top side here can start targeting down those units nicely. Big Doll Stronghold getting taken down. There's no upgrades just yet for these buildings. No masons, no nothing. Son of Osiris getting targeted down there does garrison that one nicely where that's concerned as the uh, Toxodes pushing forward here. Can Joe hold with his guard towers here or not? He doesn't really have a great counter to these Heliopoli. In a way, the best counter to the Heliopoli is, uh, is Siege Towers because they've only got themselves 50% crush armor and the siege towers i think i've got full crush themselves as joe lots of idle units back here needs to get those into the fray as the toxodes sniping down the son of osiris beautifully where that's concerned spearman trying to take out these units here as the son of osiris pulling back as well and the heliopoli gonna be able to clean up those guard towers and matrius at this point is very very much safe bronze weapons bronze mail bronze shields all coming through here for matches and Joe, he's only got himself copper mail and copper weapons at this point. So a long, long way to catch up as the village is starting to push forward onto this gold over here. Walls coming up over here as well. As the spearman can try and take out the Atlanta on the front here. But do manage to do so. Nice play where that's concerned. Son of Osiris still still alive as Polyphemus is back into the game. Such a strong unit here. 56% pierce armor, 56% hack armor, 702 HP. Just does not die. But Matrius here dropping down on the population ever so slightly. As if Polyphemus fits inside the Heliopolis. Come on. As if. As if. So many Heliopoli here for Matrius. It's such a good play to just build these. Because, I mean, the way to the way to counter the, the Heliopoli is obviously tons and tons of spearmen. But you also need the chariot archers as well to kill everything else off. And they, you just have to micro. As the spearmen do come through and... Looks like Joe will be able to hold this for the time being. It's a lot of damage actually coming through. Matrius is kind of playing a little bit too aggressively with these Heliopoli as he drops down very, very severely in population. That's a big blunder from Matrius, allowing those spearmen to come in and get that much value. It's not what he wanted there. Walls are up on the top position over here as the wall from uh, Matrius is, is actually not going to be enough. The, the caravans can come from here or they can come from here as well and just wander around the side. Pick off, pick off that wall at the back there whenever they want as well. That's some villagers coming up onto this gold mine over here. 
Uh, and Matrius is actually in a pretty dangerous position now. Why? Because all of his gold is at the top side of the map. If Joe, for a second here, says, you know what? Instead of going after the town center here, I'm going to go after the gold villages. This game is going to turn um, very, very much into Joe's favor here. The town center now still getting targeted down. Joe is one one way of thinking, and Mattress smartly says, I'm not going to let myself just lose here. Fortress going up on that position there. That's the son of Osiris now down to 62 HP. And Joe retreats back for the time being here. Mattress putting these, this pressure on. We see another fortress up on this position as well. Absolutely love that. Is there another villager back here? No, we see a barracks coming up on that position, trying to get that market up in the corner there. Just needs to gate that to get through there, but Mattress has already started a trade route. So too for, uh, for, for Joe, but it's a little bit inefficient. There's the son of Osiris still living here. The, uh, oop, oop. Migdal Stronghold survives. Joe doing a good job of living here in this game. This game might go very, very long here. Uh, how are the armor upgrades going? Is he caught up? He has caught up a little bit, but he's still behind as Iron Weapons is in for Matrius. The problem for Matrius, as he's getting Burning Pitch here, is he just doesn't have the population just yet. Has Matrius done what I expect he has? He totally has. What Matrius has done here, and I absolutely credit him for doing this because i think this is exactly how um greek should be playing the late game and every other greek player needs to kind of take note of this the late game for poseidon is and for greek is gold wood and a tiny bit of food the food is basically not you really don't even want to build hoplites here the food is basically just going in to donkey caravans everything else is going into heliopoli fortresses toxodes and, and Colossi as well. It's a really, really nice way to play. The only the only problem is when um, when a player makes mass uh, mass cavalry to, to break through your thing. But these these spearmen, they just die so quickly. That, uh, that son of Osiris is still getting mass, mad value there. Shoulder of Talos coming through as Madrius' army is just so... Dang strong, but the spearmen coming up over here, getting some good raids as the uh, the barracks actually tanking a lot of damage there from the fortress. Big doll stronghold, take it down. It's got no HP. One little attack. Okay, it doesn't matter. The, the Toxodes take it down. see some military academies coming he built the military academy target the target them down <laughs> obviously not expecting expecting your fortress to do anything uh sensible is is the mistake you don't want the, you don't want that you just uh see how else do it towers coming up now looks like joe he's he's in a bit of a pickle because this is now a, a very very big defensive liability we do see some colossus coming through does joe have up the monuments he's got one monument in his base two monuments in his base so he needs a lot more monuments to start dealing with these um with these colossi as the polyphemus and the colossi coming through engineers in as well for matrius he's got such strong units here and he's just trading so well with these Hel heliopoli and everything else do you see a siege tower siege towers are a great counter to these heliopoli but Town center under attack now. 62 HP, son of Osiris, still getting some mad value behind this. Plus the raids on this gold mine, basically finishing off those villages there. Nice play where that's concerned. Matrius has dropped down to 57 villages. Is he still building villages out of his town center? No. Um, that's a big mistake here as Matrius. I mean, he's got a lot of uh, a lot of military here though. So while he is losing some military, he's basically he's, he should be winning these fights pretty hard. There's the town center here, still getting taken down in uh, in classic, uh, in classic verse Egyptian fashion. The town center getting empowered up by the son of Osiris. The Hippolyta comes in to distract that one there for enough. Is it enough time to distract it? It looks like it is. The town center falls, but well, that's concerned. 
Atreus is kind of hurting for population as Joe is now dropping very, very quickly down here. The Siege Tower trying to push forward. Those Petropolite, not the most useful of units at this point in the game. Atreus here probably starting his villagers back up yet again as the uh, mummy manages to take down one of those gold colossi. As the uh, Theseus desperately wants to sneak in here and take that mummy out, but Joe wants as much value out of that as he possibly can. But now with Joe on two town centers, he actually is able to catch back up on the armory upgrades in a way. He still needs to get himself the, 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 the iron weapons and iron mail. The town center going to attempt to, to get rebuilt for the time being as the mummy chasing this colossus down there. 4.0 speed versus 4.3 speed. Lots and lots of colossi are out though. As the son of Osiris there, finally, after a lot of value, does end up getting sniped down as Madras just slow pushing this position. He's never going to let that town center get up here. As the, uh, as the mummy does end up getting taken down. And now Joe, I mean, he's just in, he's in such a terrible position now. He's behind on armor. He's below on population. He's facing it. And the only thing that Mattress doesn't have just yet is Champion Toxodes. And while Champion Toxodes is pretty good, it's not that important. Is he getting it? No, he's just spent all his resources. Beautiful amount of uh, beautiful macro here from Matrius, really, to just keep the keep the resources so absurdly low throughout the entirety of this game. There's the mercenary cavalry swinging in to try and take down the Theseus. But in that moment, Joe does end up tapping out. It's just such a strong composition. It's so good. Wood, gold, tiny bit of food, Toxodi, Heliopolite. Now, Ra can go, if you notice the, the, the Poseidon player or the Greek player doing this, and there's no watchtowers up with crenellations, you can go into a tech switch into mass camelry. You can win these fights with mass camelry. Why? High pierce armor, got the bonus damage versus the archers, but you need to get yourself like 20 to 30 camelry, like 160 population of economy plus camelry and just encircle it, hug it. And that forces the, um, the Greek player out of that composition for a moment. And that means they have to have their, at least have their farm set up so they can move between getting a tons of food or getting tons of wood um, based on what they're going to be building. Uh, but in this game, Joe didn't do that, couldn't quite work it out. And honestly, it's not a simple thing to work out either because you still have to have the upgrades for everything and you're already behind on economy. It's really, really tough to beat this. Matrius is showing how strong Greek is right now with the current meta. If you guys enjoyed this one, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTubes, hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next game.